What's up everybody? This is about the third time I've said this same sentence because I'm trying to record this in one take and this is probably like the sixth or seventh time I've recorded this video. So, hello! It is Pink Manta Ray Sunday and episode number one because I haven't actually done this before. But today we're going to talk about locker rooms and locker room talk and I know that has a lot of political connotations but uh, we're going to talk about my experience in locker rooms and my thoughts on locker room talk. So yeah, let's get into it. The quick answer is that I used to go into the women's bathroom before I transitioned, and since I've transitioned about two years ago, I only am going to the men's bathrooms. So, uh, the main question that I've gotten is, what locker room do you, do you go into? What do you see your experience in locker rooms? You know, how are the men in the locker rooms? And I want to frame my answer to that question by actually reading the question, one of the, like, a great question somebody put on my Instagram. Um, so. Question was, you mentioned in an interview that once you transitioned into male, you no longer had to worry about experiencing sexual harassment. You also said that your swimming team was very supportive of you when you joined. Have you heard any man, whether in a locker room or any other social group, talk disrespectfully about women? If so, how did you react? I feel that some men could take more into account your arguments as a male, having experienced what being female is like with regards to sexual harassment or assault. This is an amazing question. It's something that I think a lot about, especially, I, I thought a lot about it, especially when I started on the team. The answer is yes. There's plenty of, there are plenty of men, um, either on my team or even just like, just anywhere, just men in general, who say misogynistic things, who say sexist things. Um, I think a lot of it is harmlessly, like they don't mean it, their intentions aren't bad, but they've been raised to that, and I'm in no way saying that makes it okay, I'm not. I wanna start off by saying that no sexism, misogyny, rep, rape culture jokes, or any of that kind of stuff is okay with me, like, I don't condone any of that behavior, but I do try to see things from other people's perspectives and how they see the world. And sometimes the biggest way that I've found that I can confront people is to have a conversation with them. And that doesn't come from yelling at them and telling them they're wrong. It comes from understanding where they're coming from and what, what they think is okay and why they think it's okay. And then kind of explaining why I don't and having a conversation about it. And I found that that's been really effective. And I'm not just like, this isn't just about my swim team because my swim team just like, the only reason they're, they're involved in this conversation is because there's a bunch of guys that I interact with on like a daily basis, but it has nothing to do with the team. I think that men are raised to, to like not think as much about women and their perspectives and that's horrible and that needs to change but i don't think that yelling at somebody is going to make them change their behavior it's going to make it a confrontation it's going to make butting heads and that doesn't like that doesn't elicit any sort of growth so um yes in locker rooms there is a sort of locker room talk and i don't think it's what you know political candidate X is talking about. It's not that kind of stuff. Um, I certainly wouldn't interact with people who talk like, um, like this candidate talks. But there is a culture of talking about women in um, so, like, sort of disrespectful ways. There's a culture of talking about bodies and body shaming. There's like sort of misogynistic jokes every once in a while. And that's just like, that's in locker rooms, that's out of locker rooms. That's just like kind of a male culture thing. I will say that I've experienced sort of it's not the same, it's nowhere near as abrasive, but in, I, I've been in women's locker rooms too, and in women's locker rooms they do talk about men's bodies, not quite as abrasively, but it is there, and it made me uncomfortable when I was in, in women's bathrooms too. So there is, I mean, there is, it's not the same, but they have a similar kind of culture at, in locker rooms of talking about the other gender because it's separated by gender. And I don't think that's horrible, it's the horrible bit is like when you talk disrespectfully about people. And so the short answer of how I confront it is what I was saying earlier about trying to have conversations. The other thing is that when I first started on the team, I was um, hadn't hung out with that many guys before and it was kind of a lot for me to take in. And I had a really great mentor tell me, Skylar, you're gonna make a difference on the team by just being there and in, in these guys' lives, but you guys have you have to stay on the team for that to happen and you have to earn credibility as a friend first. You're not just gonna walk onto the team and be able to like change people or change perspectives or bring a new perspective because they have no reason to trust your opinion yet. So that that's like I think that also helped me build this idea of like needing to have conversations, needing to tr like to respect people as people first, like give them the benefit of the doubt, give them the respect, and then they're gonna give it to me. And that's been really effective. And I've had a lot of really great conversations with guys on my team and not on my team, who have said like I've shared my opinion and my perspective of having been perceived as female, and they're like, wow, I like never really thought about that. And it's kind of bad that they like that people like aren't raised to think about other people's perspectives like that especially like women um like especially thinking about women but i'm glad that i can share that with them and i found that like having that conversation with them that way is uh, the best way to actually like elicit thinking and elicit change 
So that's like my spiel on locker rooms. I know that was really quick and I think I could probably make another video about it later, but I just kind of wanted to summarize it for you guys. And um, so let me know if you have more questions in the, com in the comments. Um, I will enable comments this time. The other kind of sort of quick things, uh, sexual orientation was one of the questions that I got. I identify as queer as a whole because I think that encompasses my trans identity. And um, But at the same time, I've really only been attracted to feminine or female people in the past. So I probably am straight, but I don't like to box myself and I like don't want to write off the like that one day I could be attracted to somebody who isn't female because I don't think that's impossible. I just, it hasn't happened before, so. Also, in terms of not packing, I post a lot about that. It just means that I don't put anything in my suit, like like a like a prosthetic or anything, to make it appear like I have a penis or a bulge. That's like my stand on packing. It's like my opinion um, on my body. Like I feel even sometimes. I mean, sure, there are times when I want to conform to the cis norm, but I have this kind of desire to tell myself like my body is my body. It's okay, and I love my body, and I'm not going to put something in my suit to like make other people think that my body's okay. That's my opinion for anybody who wants to pack, who needs bottom surgery, who wants bottom surgery, who's had bottom surgery, all those kind of things. Like that's that's totally your prerogative and I'm not putting judgment on that. That's just not how I feel about my body and that's my opinion on on my body. The Another thing, um, psych <laughs> words are hard. My major, people ask, over and over my major. I'm gonna major in psychology most likely. I haven't declared yet because I'm a sophomore and sophomores don't have to declare for another month, but I'm probably gonna declare psychology. Um, there's a track called Cognitive Neuroscience and Evolutionary Psychology, which is a mouthful and it sounds a lot fancier than it actually is, but it's essentially just psychology with a little bit more hard science attached to it. And then the last thing is my swim goals and people ask me, you know, do you wanna to go to the Olympics? What do you wanna do nationally, etc.?" And honestly, I don't have set goals on what sort of competitions or times I want to make. I'm much more focused on just trying to like love what I'm doing and have a great time doing so. People would say college is the best part of your of your life or something and I'm inclined to believe that's not true because I think that my life is going to be great after college but I really want to take advantage of this time and I'm enjoying what I'm doing and I want to keep enjoying what I'm doing and swimming is a huge part of that so I and I always swim fast when I'm having fun so my main goal is actually not specific times or events that I want to get to it's just to keep you're really growing, getting faster with, with respect to myself, but just having a great time doing it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have suggestions or ideas or feedback or whatever, I'm always open to all those things. I hope you all have a great rest of your weekend. Much love.